today's episode of the Brain Spike Back podcast, we speak with Brian Jensko, co-founder and CEO of Nonbelievable, a mission-based baked goods company striving to combat hunger in America, one cookie at a time. Long-term listeners will be familiar with Brian since he was previously on the show back in 2020. And in today's episode, he tells us what he's been up to since then. And he shares his story of pioneering Nonbelievable and how it's making a positive impact to help tackle hunger. And we also discuss how having an underlying mission for your company can help attract talent, particularly from younger generations. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. So thank you for having me on the show, Sam, on your podcast. It's really exciting to be back. And in the three years since I've been on your show, a lot has happened. But for some of your folks who don't have any history of Brian Genesco or my, my background, I am a finance guy turned entrepreneur. And what I mean by that is I was working at Morgan Stanley and that's when my business partner and I had the idea for a healthy eating, completely self-service online meal delivery solution. And this is back before we had HelloFresh, Blue Apron and the proliferation of on-demand delivery services. But we wanted to create a model that was really the ultimate in convenience. And when I think about you know, what prompted that, it was just nutrition took a back seat to healthy living while I was busy working long hours at, at, at the bank. And I really wanted to do something about it. And I thought if there were people like me, there must be thousands of others who also wanted to eat better, but just were time starved. And so that was really the catalyst for starting that first business. And so much more came out of that. But ultimately we launched that business, uh, New Kitchen, We grew that and we sold that and i'll I'll come back to that in a little while but that really led to an amazing journey of social venture entrepreneurship and everything i've done since selling new kitchen has really been about the betterment of, of people and i was talking a little bit about this earlier today that the common thread with everything that i've done has really been about helping people at at its core And what I mean by that is helping people move to next, to uplift, to elevate, to find purpose. And certainly in the case of New Kitchen, to live a healthier life. And by doing that, I just think of that through everything I've done. And it's specifically with Wicked Start and Grow, the next big venture that I invested my time, money, resources in, was really a pioneering platform to help people start a business. It was an automated step-by-step plan. And we had a great feature in the New York Times and we helped to elevate that. Unfortunately, uh, right around the time that I was speaking with you in 2020, the pandemic struck and we had a very difficult time. And so there were some choices that we had to make. I was um, managing another initiative, which is what I'm currently doing today and unbelievable. But we made the decision to not pursue that because the path to profitability was quite long. And we didn't have a proper distribution plan in place, certainly with the pandemic. So I think with with many businesses, we can talk about that. But there were a lot of learnings from that. And what I think about most is what I'm currently doing and how that really is a manifestation of everything that I've learned along the way. I'll stop and take a breath. If if there's anything more I can do to clarify, ask away. No, I think I think uh, you you clarified a lot there. And I have to say, from all the conversations I've had from you or with you, rather. I get that impression. I mean, the last episode that we had, it was all about like how anyone could produce a startup. So I really do get that vibe that you have that sensation and like underlying drive to help others. And like you mentioned, the last time we spoke, we had no idea of the the shitstorm that was around the corner. (laughs) (laughs) And I'd be really curious to know, like, for those uh, who are long term listeners of Brain Spike Back, and they're probably just as curious as I am. Um, like what has transpired in your life since the last time we spoke in 2020? Well, to answer the first part of, of the sort of the question, but a statement you made about how easy it is to start a business. I firmly believe that today it is never it has never been easier to start a business. I firmly believe that. However, I will also say that it's never been harder to stay in business. Um, there's so many elements that we need to consider from Uh, technology distribution while that may make it easier to start a business i do think that what it what it requires to stay in business really requires a lot of critical thought and appreciation for all that goes into it and really aligning with a team that not only believes in 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 the mission and what you're doing but actually has the skill sets to take you there but more on that later so when we last talked we were getting going with a business called unbelievable and unbelievable is a mission-based baked goods business. 
And what's really special about that business is the fact that we have a one for one giving model. And while that particular aspect of a model isn't so unique these days, Bombas is, is who I hold up as a terrific example. I actually like to think of Unbelievable as the Bombas of baked goods. I believe that what we're doing is unique in the fact that we are what I would call a for purpose business. And for purpose combines the best of what I think for profit, running a business so that you can be here for the long term while building a meaningful and enduring business, while also supporting a cause, supporting a mission that people care about. And frankly, hunger is a top top issue that Americans care about. No one wants to see anyone go hungry, in particular children. So regardless of your background, your affiliation, your political affiliation, whatever that may be, hunger is something we can all align around. And so bringing that mission together with, with a, a, a model like Unbelievable, I thought was unique because cookies, baked goods are actually growing. Snacking is a growing category, more so than other eating categories, and in particular, healthier alternatives, gluten-free, sugar-free. So if you can make a delicious cookie that hits some of those attributes, and I believe we have, and Sam, if you haven't tried, send me your dress and I promise I will send you some samples. I think you've nailed it. But more important than that is really addressing hunger. So we support Feeding America and a few other charities that provide hunger relief across the US. And with every cookie pack that's sold, we provide a meal to someone in need through, in this case, Feeding America. And while that may not be unique in and of itself, what I think is unique is how also part of our brand DNA is not just this one for one model, but it's recruiting people who believe in this mission. And I have to tell you, that has been a very powerful tool for, for bringing people into our unbelievable world. And I'll tell you the reason that that's so important is recruiting can be really difficult as you may or may not have experienced, but if you're hiring people, there are a lot of options out there. I know the economy may be teetering on recession right now and in a downturn, things do shift, but there's a lot of opportunity for people to work in other places and what better rallying cause than a mission that people care about. Because if you're gonna to come to work every day, knowing that you're gonna be doing something better for the world, better for the planet, isn't that a whole lot better? So that's, Element number two. So the first is our one for one giving model. The second is the fact that we track people to the business that believe in the mission. And then we volunteer. We're always every month, every quarter, we're going out to support the organizations that we care for, whether it's city relief in New York. Um, there's there's the hunger children's fund in California, where we were recently out last month, or of course, working with Feeding America or even World Vision. There are a number of partners we work with. And then finally, we donate product. So um, a lot of opportunities to donate product because who doesn't love a cookie, right? So I think we've really combined some pretty interesting elements here. And I've really coined the term for purpose. Uh, I shouldn't say I coined it. There was, a, I had a conversation with a fellow who, who mentioned this concept. And what I'd like to think I'm doing is helping elevate it and bring it to life because I do think that brands, in particular consumer brands, have a purpose and they should, they should align themselves with the cause that people care about. So, all of that to say, I believe that we're on the precipice of what the future of CPG, of brands, products represents. It's not just starting a company with a business to promote another cookie or another product. It's about aligning with the cause that people care about while delivering an amazing experience. And, and that's what I think we do, and I think we do it quite well. So that is what really I've been up to 100% since we last spoke in 2020. This is my core focus. I can tell you're super passionate about it. And I have to say, I will take you up on that offer. I would love to try some yes. uh, of those cookies. Uh, I mean, like you said, who doesn't love a cookie? I'm not going to turn down cookies. That'd be crazy not to accept that. So I would, uh, yeah, I'd love to try that. And also, I just think that um, it's it's really cool that, like you said, you're, you're just very focused and driven with this underlying mission. and Unbelievable! I want to know where did that game name come from? That sounds so it, uh, great. Like I don't know, I don't, I'm lost for words. All right, Unbelievable was originally inspired by Tony Robbins, and where that inspiration came from was he actually helped a group of nuns who were being evicted from a mission uh, in the neighborhood in San Francisco. 
And what I loved about the story was the fact that these women devoted their lives to feeding those in need and every penny they got really went to serve that purpose. And they didn't pay the rent and they were being evicted. And so Tony bought them a mission. And I remember reading the story and just recognizing the power of giving back and the power of that inspiration. And we have a relationship with Tony Robbins. And so he provided the seed funding for Unbelievable, which is incredible. But what we wanted to do was not just serve a neighborhood. We wanted to serve the entire country. We wanted to make sure that we could make a difference in every community in the United States. And so we focused on partnering with Feeding America, a very reputable nationally recognized organization. And then my co-founder Kuda Biza and I, Kuda has a lot of experience and is no stranger to hunger. He comes from Zimbabwe where his family experienced famine and drought. So this is personal for him. So combining that with my experience in business building and creating better for you products, I thought was a no brainer. So coming to market with that idea, the support of Feeding America and really attempting to make a difference in a meaningful way was really the catalyst for that. And when I think of Unbelievable today, what, what the brand stands for today is, you know, a really a reverent play on the word Unbelievable. It's we have none GMO products. We have none of the bad stuff. So we have a little fun with the brand. So while it's a very serious cause, we like to make sure that we are also being somewhat playful in terms of just in the everyday because we need to have some fun in life because there's a lot of serious things going on and we need to pay a lot of attention to what is going on in the world. However, that shouldn't stop us from enjoying a delicious moment. And our mantra has really become, our goal is to end hunger in the most delicious way. You know, I get that playful vibe from it. I, I really like that. And that's kind of what I want to ask, but I never would have predicted a story like that um, behind uh, the name. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. And and we, we pre-launched with Tony Robbins on stage in Las Vegas um, before we even had a product just to see would people even resonate with the concept. Mm -hmm. And and of course they did. And today we've been able to provide over a million meals to feed those in need. And so for us, it's pretty powerful. And where I'm going to go with this, certainly in the future, is Feeding America recently received some funding to actually eliminate poverty in certain segments of the population. So I believe hunger may always be with us to some extent, but I do think there's a lot of systemic poverty that if we, systemic poverty, which leads to food insecurity. So if we can address that, I think we can actually solve the hunger crisis. And I'm really excited because our partner, Feeding America, has really uh, evaluated a lot of uh, programs across the country that can work in particular in areas of the country, high urban areas, densely populated areas, and in particular communities of color where hunger is more acute. So they've got a number of programs in place. And so they believe in the next five to 10 years, they could actually reduce the amount of poverty in some of these communities by more than 50%. So I think that's a pretty awesome place to be. So if we start with Let's give a person a meal when they're in need. That's great with the one for one model, but how do we follow that up and actually attempt to solve the hunger crisis? So I really love the fact that there is attention on this as well. So we're all part of that. So while you're enjoying your amazing cookie, that experience, you can know that you're helping to solve a really challenging problem. That's amazing. And you know, I did have some more questions. I was, I was gonna ask you more about like, conscious consumerism and being impact phone focused and sustainable business habits and by all means if you have more to speak about on this then don't let me stop you but i did want to call back to something you mentioned earlier which really stuck out for me about how you make your mission part of your hiring process like people have to be on board and i know this is a bit of a curveball but i'd love to know like how have you found that impacting your hiring process have you found that you've got like more applicants as a result or have you found that um yeah like I, I don't know. Like, I'd love to know how, how does that impact it? We have people coming to us. And so I would like to think, and I believe I've been hiring people for 20 years now, um, that the fact we have a mission has improved and brought us incredible candidates because everybody in this case cares about this cause. 
And so I think uh, it is a real advantage for any company. And in this particular day and age, retaining uh, talent is absolutely critical. We all may be familiar with the cost of hiring, recruiting, hiring, training. There's a lot of hard dollar costs and time involved with that. So if you're constantly turning staff, that can be really challenging for your business. So having this particular element as part of our brand platform, the fact that you know we, we, we give the one for one, we have the one for one model, we volunteer, we donate product, that's, that's really important and people are attracted to that. People reach out to me proactively. So when we put out an ad for a job or a spec or whatever channel we use, we find that the response is overwhelmingly positive. And what I'm particularly interested in is, is how many people write cover letters. Now that's not something I've really experienced in the last few years. Uh, I know we've had an amazing job market and so maybe people didn't feel the need, but what I loved was how many people wrote these amazing stories about why they wanted to work for us, why they wanted to be part of the unbelievable story. The fact that, yes, it's an emerging brand, it's better for you, but they also felt that what we're trying to do is make a difference. That makes sense. And one of the reasons I asked that is because I have seen statistics that say that like Gen Z are so focused on the underlying mission of the company. So I can imagine at this point, it's probably something that really helps you stand out when it comes to attracting talent. Um, yeah. I know that yeah, I personally I, would be attracted to that. Yeah, I, well, definitely Gen Z are very much focused on on anything that they do uh, long-term has to be really attached to a cause or the, the, mm. the focus is a very different work ethic from let's say Gen Xers, for example. I, I, I have no, there's a lot of generational differences and we've got, uh, folks as young as I think 18, 19, and as old as 65, 70 on our team. So we really run the gamut in terms of uh, age ranges, generations, if you will, Whether regardless of what you may categorize folks, what we have amassed is, a, is an amazing pool of talent that really brings together the best, I think, of all worlds. And we do all align, it, align around that cause because that is what really galvanizes us to go that extra mile. Um, mm -hmm. we may have talked about this before. I've certainly talked about it in previous interviews about how easy it is when you start a business or when you hit a wall, you've hired someone, you're, 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 you're really stuck. It's easy to quit. Anyone can quit and people may not fault you for quitting and fine. But mm -hmm. what I do think we have an obligation to do are, are look for challenge, look for, you know, solutions to challenging problems. Can we climb over that mountain? Do we have to blast a hole through that mountain? How are we going to get across that mountain? Because if we do, you know, we're going to be able to be in a, a much better place. And I find that people are more willing to problem solve and take ownership. And so, yes, absolutely. It's been a boon for, I think, recruiting, for retaining talent and making sure during those difficult times that that is that that's our North Star. That's our aligning, mm -hmm. our, our aligning focus for sure. That's awesome. I love that. And I have to say, I really want to make the most of this opportunity with you because I've hosted almost 150 episodes of the podcast now. And I can say I've never had someone on before who has built a business like this, like around cookies, for example. I find it fascinating. <laughs> and um, I really want to know, like, what has surprised you the most about building this business? And what have you learned throughout this process? Well, I, I will say that while we may have started in cookies, I wouldn't view us as a cookie business. And I, I, I say that because uh, we're a snack goods business and, and snacking was really my key motivator for launching in this particular area. And within snacking, cookies is one of the fastest growing categories. And for many reasons, in particular ones that resonated closely with me, I, I just thought that was the best place to go. So we had market insights and consumer research, but what cookies may have been what we started with. And that is what our model currently is known for. There is every opportunity for us to move into all kinds of adjacent snacking categories. I look at what Mondelez has done. Mondelez, you may know, is one of the largest snack good companies in the world. They own Cadbury's. They own the Oreo cookie. Um, they own all kinds of, of uh, different products. But this is how people are eating. So this is really leaning into a macro consumer trend of instead of eating three large meals a day, you're finding a lot of people snacking in between, having little bite, little indulgences, if you will. Um, that's how people are eating. So we're really playing into that trend. So that was, I think, the important part here. Um, and that was really critical for me wanting to lean into that. 
but also it lent itself well to a one for one giving model. And so it just seemed like a perfect, a perfect marriage. That's fantastic. Did you answer the question, Sam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it did. And I think there's so much this conversation has been unique. Um, and it's so fantastic having you on. And you know what, Brian, I'm I'm more than happy to have you on again. Maybe we touch base in a year. And but let's see, it'll be fun to say, like, um, get some predictions going. I want to know what's on the horizon for yourself and you folks at Numbelievable. It's it's a great question. What's unique about this platform uh, relative to what I've been involved with before, and and I've co-founded and advised multiple many many companies here. I think I've just talked about two. My first one, and then one that was very impactful for me, where there were some lessons learned, but there have been others along the way as well. All follow the path of better for you, and and in my mind of of helping people. And so when I think of Unbelievable and the future of where we're going. Right now, Numbelievable, I believe, has the opportunity to really be the leading mission-based baked goods company. So when I talk about being at the precipice of for purpose, we are there and we are that company. And we recently signed a deal with a very large marketing strategist right now to help us as we shift into retail. We're in about 2,000 stores across the U.S. and we're available on Amazon. But this shift to this new strategist could easily 10x, 100x our stores in the next 12 to 18 months. So I expect certainly within the next 24 months for everyone across the U.S. to really know who Unbelievable is and know what our mission is. And when they see us on that store shelf, that they're going to pick us up and purchase us because not only do we taste good, but we're actually working to end hunger in the most delicious way. Fantastic. Well, I hope everyone listening goes and checks all the work that you've been doing out, but it's definitely unbelievable. And if people do want to check out unbelievable, try it or um, or keep up with you, how can they? What's the what's the best way for them to do that, Brian? I have a LinkedIn profile. People are certainly welcome to to follow me there. But I also um, am happy to um, you know people reach out to me. I respond, so I, I will definitely respond to to to, to messages. Um, Look, I, I think we all owe it to ourselves, to the planet, to our our brothers and sisters here in, in, in planet Earth to, to do something better. And I believe that if you're going to launch a business, think about something that's important to you, that's important that other people can, can get behind. Because I do believe that is how you're going to build a meaningful and enduring business that can be here for the long term and make a difference. Fantastic. Well... I hope uh, today's podcast brings Unbelievable to some new folks that have not heard of it. And I really hope that it does help you bring you one step forward in your mission. And I just want to say, Brian, thank you so much for joining me today. I love, I'd love to have you on again sometime soon, or, or at least within a, a year or so, and we can see how things have progressed. But until then, all the best. Growing a company. Thank you. I love it. Thank from you, securing sir. funding to expanding your business capabilities to ranking better on search. Each business challenge is uniquely complex. The solution to these challenges is growth-focused digital PR and marketing, and that is where our sponsor, Publicize, comes in. Publicize sets itself apart from traditional PR companies. It does not charge large retainers or churns out press releases whether you've got a newsworthy announcement or not. Publicize builds businesses' online presence and gets high-quality PR and media coverage for startups and entrepreneurs who are priced out of a broken PR industry. What's more, listeners of BrainSpike Back can find the tools and resources they need to overcome common hurdles that many startups face when trying to generate long-term growth by visiting publicize.co slash bbb. That's publicize.co slash bbb. That is it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've learned something. And if you have benefited from today's episode, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast as these reviews really help us grow the show. You can also follow us wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Just search Brain Spike back and you will find us. We hope you join us for more episodes in the future. And until then, take care. Disclosure, this episode contained a client and a Spacio portfolio company.